If I create a video because of your comment, I'll give you a shout out. So be sure to let me know in the comments what you'd like to see. Today I have a 12 volt step up regulator. It's a U3V70F12. Uh, normally I'd do a separate video on how to use this device versus this video, which is about how to solder the device, but it's a regulator, so it's pretty straightforward. Um, but I just do want to cover a couple little things here. When you open up your package, you'll get the pins and you'll get these clamps and the actual regulator itself. Now, with the regulator, you're going to have a voltage coming in. So you have your positive V in, your ground, and then your positive V out and ground and that's just going to be a 12 volt constant coming out. The input can be anywhere from 2.9 to 12 volts and it can handle a 10 amp burst um, but it, it typically handles about 6 to 7 amps continuous and that's going to also depend on how much your input voltage is. So it handles 2.9 to 12 volts but it's most efficient uh, around 9 volts or greater. So try to keep it as close to 12 volts as possible and you'll get the best efficiency. Um, also there's a neat feature it has an enable pin, and you can drive this low to for a low power mode. I believe it says it uses something like 10 microamps. Um, so if you want to shut your power off and you don't need it, uh, you don't want to waste that current that's getting that's transferring the 12 volts or converting the uh, input voltage to 12 volts. So you can just go into low power mode. All right, so on to soldering. We have it comes with pins, and it comes with clamps. Now the problem with the pins is you can put these in there, but when you line it up with the breadboard, you can see that this one row of pins is going to line up, but then this other row is not. So this isn't going to work for a typical breadboard. You'd either have to have two breadboards together um, or an oversized breadboard. The other alternative is to use these clamps, in which case you would put them in any really any orientation, but I would be inclined to put them like this and then you just clamp down your input wires like that. Uh, another thing I just want to make mention of is don't put these pins on if you're not going to use the pins. Either use the pins or the clamps um, because if you put these pins on here and then you use the clamps you're going to be exposing a positive voltage and a ground pin down here and you could very easily short that out and cause a lot of damage. I'm going to clamp this little guy down here, but we got to turn this around because we're going to want our clamp to be put on this way. So let me spin this around, and then I'm just going to use this to hold it in place. And just as with any soldering, you want to make sure you touch the solder against the pin and the uh, contact pad. Put a little solder on there until you see it start flowing. And that's it. Same thing over here. You want to make sure you heat up both the pin and the pad itself. Otherwise, if the pin is cold and the pad is hot, then the solder will stick to the pad and then the pin will be kind of just be pressed in there. It'll be held in there by the cold solder or uh, but yeah, by the cold solder. And then you create what's called a cold solder joint. All right. Now I'll just repeat the process for the other side. You can see, I don't know if you can see that on the video, but it just kind of sucked up to the pin there. So you can tell your pin got hot enough to hold the solder. Now, if you do notice that when you, when you uh, solder this, the uh, connector moves a bit, then try to only do one pin before making that adjustment, but you would just heat up, you would just heat up that one pin and then you'd be able to wiggle it that way. Now, I won't be able to do that now because I have both of them heated up, but if you do need to make an adjustment after you've done one pin, you can just heat it up and move it with your fingers and then pull off and let it cool down. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. If you like this video and you want to see more like it, give me a thumbs up. And 
don't forget to subscribe.